Before we begin to write any business letters, we need to know the formal format for writing a business letter. Even though everyone uses email today, very common, you still need to have a formal letter. That can be inside your email or in an attached PDF. And sometimes you actually can still use paper and send mail. I know that sounds unusual, but it happens. The key point is to be formal. And in business, we want to be formal so we follow a style everyone knows, everyone's used to. It helps you look professional and it helps you to make the right impression, a business impression. If you're looking for a customer, there's a great way to let the customer know you can be counted on. You're reliable, you're professional. And I know you want to do the right way, you just don't know what it is. So let's just jump right into it and learn what are the important pieces and parts of a business letter that you need to follow. The good thing is your QBL software will help you do almost all of this. So let's jump right into it and see what are the important parts of a business letter. So we begin with this idea that the business letter has four parts. So keep this in mind. It's a little bit hard to remember, but heading, opening, body, and closing. Heading, opening, body, and closing. If you look at this picture here, you can see that the body is where you're going to write the message of your, of your letter. Also think of an email. When you write an email, it has mostly body. The heading is going to be you. This is your information. And the opening is going to be the receiver information. So this is who is this going to the receiver? Who is it to? And up here is who is it from? So keep that in mind, right? From heading to opening and closing again is from where you sign your name, right? That's easy to remember. So you begin the letter, formal letter with from and you end the formal letter with who it's from. And then in between you've got this information and right in here is the content the body and that body is going to be your main point that's what we're going to learn about in all of our other lessons when we look up at the heading what do we see we can see that we have something like this which would be the company's name address and telephone number let's just take a quick look at this because I think we get confused about how this is formatted in different countries in general we're going to have the company name first and then we're going to have the address and that address can be any combination of street, street number, city, country, province, zip code. Remember sometimes it gets confusing. For example here we have Taipei comma Taiwan, Taiwan being a province actually of the Republic of China so should we write this this way or another way? It does get awfully confusing very fast. But the important thing to remember is watch out just for that kind of idea. Company, then address, and then down here is the contact information, which could, could include things like telephone number, fax number, email number, uh, website information, etc. Now, the next part we come to is the date line. Now the dateline is inside the opening, so we've gotten past the part where we're talking about who is this from. Now we're going to talk about who is this to. That's the opening. So the first part of the opening is going to be the dateline. And in the dateline we have two fundamentally different ways to write the date. And that includes the American way and the British UK way. And both ways are okay, but of course uh, you need to know which one is which. So the American style is month and then the day. So month, day, and then year. And there's a comma right after day. And I want you to pay attention to this. It's so confusing. So this, is, if this is the day for, you need a comma here. Please watch out for that right there. We're going to talk about this a lot. Before a comma, no space. No space before a comma. After a comma, you have one space. One space always after a comma. Keep that in mind. So that's the American way. What about the British or European way? First, we have the 
date, the day of the, of the month, then we have the month, and then we have the year, and there's no commas in there at all. So those are the two different ways. The next part of the opening is a special notation. You may have something that's secret or personal or confidential, and you can just write that there, and it's all caps. It's all in capital letters uh, to let the person who's receiving it know that something important is happening there. Okay, now we're gonna write who's this letter to. This is the receiver. So when we look at the receiver, we can see here that we have different parts of the address. First of all, we're gonna have who is this to, the person, the actual receiver. Then we're gonna have the company that it's going to be to. So there are many ways to write a person's name, but it is important to try to get a person's name. Lots of times people send an email or a letter and they don't even include the person's name. But in this part of the opening of your letter, it's very important to have a receiver that's much more professional than no receiver. So we here, here we have some examples and you can see this inside your QBL program. There are examples to help guide you along. Just click on the help area and a little yellow help will pop up and give you many examples of how to do this. Next part is the actual address. So here we have the company's name and then the street address and then the country. So don't forget that this is the general format. Now of course each country has a different method or a different way to do their addressing. So you just need to follow an example from there. But in general, this is the way it is. The person, then the company, and then the street address, city, and last would be country.